Hello, and thank you for joining us for this segment of Daily Bible Bites at Mount Olive Multicultural Community Church. Today is April 13th, and we have three chapters again today. We are reading chapters 9, 10, and 11. I missed a couple more days because we had to, at the very last minute, travel to Michigan. Uh, my father-in-law has taken ill quite quickly, and we are here basically to keep vigil. Um, with him at this point and he will be gone over to glory um, sometime soon and he has made all of his plans all of his arrangements on his own time and he said he's just giving God all the thanks and praise because he has been able to attend his own home going is what he has said he is um, reconciled with everything that is going on with his health he has said everything he wanted to say to all his family friends and loved ones um, but it's kind of set us back just a little bit um, making some different travel arrangements in that so I apologize for the delay in these but we are right where we're supposed to be so let's start with chapter 9 go back to Pharaoh the Lord commanded and tell him God demands that you let his people go if you refuse God will send a deadly plague to destroy your herds but none of the Israeli herds will be touched the next morning all the cattle of the Egyptians began dying but none of the Israeli cattle were dead then God said Take ashes from the killing. Moses toss it into the sky. It will spread like dust and cause boils to break out upon people and animals alike. So they took ashes and went to Pharaoh. Moses tossed it toward the sky and it became boils on men and animals. And the magicians couldn't stand before Moses because of the boils. But God hardened Pharaoh. Then the Lord said, stand before Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go to worship me. This time I'm going to send a plague that will prove there is no other God, for I wanted to demonstrate my power to all the earth. Tomorrow I will send a hailstorm, such as has never been. Bring in your cattle, for every man and animal left out will die beneath the hail. Some of the Egyptians, terrified by this threat, brought their cattle and slaves in from the fields. So Moses held out his hand, and the Lord sent thunder and hail. Never in all of Egypt had there been a storm like that. Everything left in the field was killed. The only spot in all Egypt without hell was the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh sent for Moses. I finally see my fault, he confessed. God is right. Beg God to end this thunder and hell and I will let you go. All right, Moses replied. As soon as I have left, I will spread my hands and the thunder and hell will stop. But I know that you will not obey him. So Moses lifted his hands to the Lord and the thunder and hell stopped. When Pharaoh saw this, he sinned yet more by their stubborn refusal to let the people leave. 10. Then the Lord said to Moses, go back again and make your demand upon Pharaoh. But I have hardened him so that I can do more miracles demonstrating my power. What stories you can tell your children about the things I am doing in Egypt? So Moses and Aaron requested another audience with Pharaoh. How long will you refuse to let my people go? If you, if you refuse, if you refuse, I will cover the nation with locusts and they will finish destroying everything that escapes the hell. The court officials came to Pharaoh, let the men go and serve God. So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. He said, who is it you want to go to? We will go with our sons and daughters, flocks and herds, Moses replied. We will take everything with us. Pharaoh retorted, never. And they were driven from Pharaoh's presence. Then the Lord said, hold out your hand to bring locusts. They will, at, they will eat everything the hell has left. And the locusts covered the land and they ate every bit of vegetation the hell had left. Then Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron and said, I confess my sin against Jehovah and begged Jehovah to take away this death. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And he sent a west wind that blew the locusts out into the Red Sea. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people go. Lift your hands, and darkness will descend upon the land of Egypt. So there was a thick darkness over the land for three days. But all the people of Israel had light as usual. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and said, Go and worship God, but let your flocks and herds stay here. No, Moses said, we must take our sacrifices. Not a hoof shall be left. 
So the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let them go. Get out and don't let me see you again, Pharaoh shouted. The day you do, you shall die. Very well, Moses replied, I will never see you again. 11. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will send just one more disaster on Pharaoh and his land and after that he will let you go. Tell all the men and women of Israel to ask their Egyptian neighbors for gold and silver jewelry. For God caused the Egyptians to be revered by the Egyptian people. Now Moses announced, God says, about midnight I will pass through Egypt, and all the oldest sons shall die, from Pharaoh to the lowliest slave and even the firstborn of the animals. The wail of death will resound throughout Egypt, but not a dog shall move his tongue against Israel. Then you will know that God makes a distinction between Egyptians and Israelis. All these officials will come running to me, begging, please leave at once. Only then will I go. Then Moses stopped from the palace. And that um, is the chapter, that those are chapters 10, 9, 10, and 11. I'm sorry. Um, and so the, that's the word for today. We're in the midst of the plagues um, that God sent because Moses would not let the people go. It's just that simple. Um, when God gives a command, this command being let, right? Let my people go. It can be let anything. When God gives a command, it must be adhered to or we must expect plagues. We've got to expect something that is going to come um, that is not going to be pleasant because God commands things for a specific reason. It's just like when we're small and our parents tell us to do something or not to do something and we're just to do it. We don't have the capacity to completely understand why or what harm it may cause. Our job is to do it. And that's the same thing with God. When he gives a command, we want to carry out that command or expect that there are not going to be any blessings or anything that's good, great, or wonderful to write home about. Amen? We must obey the commands of God or he will also turn us over to a reprobate heart and a reprobate mind, meaning that it's so hardened that we cannot come back to it. We've got to do what God says. And when we are obedient, even when we're in the midst of turmoil, even when we're in the midst of a, a, any kind of pestilence, spiritual or otherwise, we have got to know that God has got us. He's on our side. And that's why he prepared um, the people and said, go to the Egyptians and get the goods, get the jewelry so that they have money. The word of God says money worketh all things. They needed to be able to have goods and money and, and things to trade so that they would be able to survive as they were going through the wilderness to the promised land. So the word for today is obedience. Obey the Lord and you will be saved. Disobey the Lord and there will be a plague. It's that simple. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us for this segment of Daily Bible Bites. As always, we want you to join us over on the other side at www.dltmoreministries.com. God bless you and we love you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.